Hey everybody, my name is Nick Justician. I teach virtual production at Drexel University. And in this video, we're going to be jumping into the physical studio to take a look at how you can use cross polarization to improve your metahuman photogrammetry. I do want to say thank you to Drexel students Lara and Nikki for coming out to the studio during summer break to help me out with this tutorial. So last week I released a video talking about photogrammetry for creating metahumans. And I mentioned this. What we're doing here is using cross polarization. I'll do another video later on that uh, shows a little bit more about this. So of course, just two days later, Epic released this video detailing how they created the metahumans for The Matrix Awakens. And this came up. Cross polarized, cross polarization, cross polarization. Any light that would have been blocked by the cross polarization cross-polarized reference. So let's dig into cross-polarization. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. So the most important thing about cross-polarization for us is what it does for our photogrammetry photos. Namely, it removes specularity. So here's a pair of photos of Nikki and Lara. These were taken without using cross-polarization. Here's essentially the same photos taken with cross-polarization. As you can see, the specular reflections, not only on their skin, but in their hair and even on their clothing, disappear with cross-polarization. This is incredibly useful for photogrammetry when scanning people for metahumans, because the specular highlights are going to change from photo to photo as the light source, the flash on the camera, moves around the subject for each photo. With cross-polarization applied, those reflections don't end up in the photos, and instead the photogrammetry can be based entirely on the diffuse colors of the skin. This is actually pretty easy and inexpensive to set up. To do it, you'll need two polarizing filters. In this example, I have one that's just a sheet of gel plastic to go over a light source, and the other is a lens filter. These are both generally readily available from just about any photography equipment store. Cross polarization occurs when the filter over the light source is polarizing perpendicular to the lens filter. At this point, the light stops coming through. You've actually seen this effect if you've watched a 3D movie or used a 3D television. In the case of a 3D television, each row of pixels is polarized in an opposite direction. This screen is currently showing solid red on the left and solid green on the right for all rows. So the 3D glasses in front of it will show those colors from left to right. When the screen is switched to 3D mode, the two colors are interlaced across the entire width of the screen. The result looks yellowish without the use of the glasses. However, holding up the glasses to the screen cross-polarizes in a different direction for each eye, resulting in each eye seeing a different image. For my own cross-polarization setup, I use a ring flash and a polarizing filter over the lens that the ring flash is mounted to. The cross polarization setup is finished by using a polarizing gel filter that's been cut to fit over the ring flash. Some magnets are added to hold the filter in place. The filter also covers two continuous LED lights that are on the ring flash. These are typically used to assist with focusing, but they can also be used to help fine tune the cross polarization alignment. In this setup, both filters are in place and the LED lights are on, with the camera pointed at a reflective surface. The LED light reflections are visible through the camera as long as the polarizing filters are not aligned for cross-polarization. By rotating the flash independent of the lens, cross-polarization is reached when the LED lights disappear. With this alignment achieved, all photos taken with this setup will result in cross-polarized images free of specular highlights. Hope this helps. Until next time, have fun.